Okay, I drew up my blueprint diagram for my solar system that's going to be combined, you know, with my existing power system, if you will. So here, I'm just going to kind of go over it slowly. If you want to, you can go back and hit pause and check it out. And zoom in a little bit. There you go. All right, so we'll see if it works. And here's the next step. I've got some materials that came in. My solar panels have been delivered. And I got my battery monitor, got my shunt, and then I've got my solar charge controller. So I'm going to start taking these out, make sure the panels are in good shape. It doesn't look like the box is too damaged, so hopefully everything's fine. And we'll go from there. In order to get this 2-watt wire and this 2-watt wire into this area, I'm going to have to drill a couple of more holes, one for each of the wires because it's nice and big. And that means that I'm going to be running the wire behind uh, this setup with the fridge and everything, and I've got the foam and the sides there, so I've got to pull that all out, so that's the next step. This is my battery house. I have one battery in here now. I have removed the other battery uh, to create a workspace here. You can see the holes up there and that's going to be running cable from the solar charge controller down to the battery bank. And then over here is my shunt. And you can see that I have a cable running through uh, the house section. And that's actually the new two watt cable that's running over to the inverter. I'll try to show you through here. So back of my fridge, big cable right there. Running right there, a new cable, new connection. So that's the old cable. So we're up, we got two out cable running over to the inverter. So that's helpful. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run this category five cable for the trimetric battery monitor. Here's an example of the connection that's going to go from the shunt to the batteries. This is 3 aught cable, so really huge cable. And then I just used these terminals and connected them using this guy. So what you do is you essentially take a ring terminal, connector, pop it in here, put in the wire, bang, bang, bang with a hammer, and then I just covered the end with electrical tape. So, made a nice solid connection, really solid. These are some breathing tubes that I use in my brass teaching, but they also come in handy to protect wires when they go around corners or when they cut into holes drilled into walls, that kind of thing. So, I'm going to slide a couple of these and they're going to act as protective sleeves to give the wire a little bit more protection where it needs it. More supplies for the solar project. So what I'm going to do is I got some angle iron and some uh, eighth inch thick aluminum. I'm going to cut these down and I'm going to turn these into brackets that are going to hold the solar panels in place. This is a plastic junction box and I'm going to use this to uh, essentially send the wires through it down into the house. And I got one where you have to drill your own holes because a lot of them came with holes like down here. So I felt like when that sat on the roof, it would be really close to, for example, if there was pooling of water. And I feel like that's just begging for more issues. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill the holes higher so when this is sitting on the top of the RV, there's a little bit of room just so we can, you know, uh, have a little bit more safety. I'll plug that guy in there, you know, up here as opposed to the standard, you know, down there. And then I got a bunch of wire, big, heavy wire. This is actually two aught wire, so it's two slash zero. Nice and heavy, and that's going to run to my inverter as well as from the batteries. Um, I've got some smaller wire. This is probably overkill with the four gauge wire, but I'd rather put the money in good cable than put it in, for example, another solar panel. Uh, it seems to be a better move. And this uh, just little category five cable, I got this because I'm going to hook up uh, a connection to my battery monitor. So uh, from my car battery as well, so I got that. And then just a little more of that, that, that two aught wire. Man, this stuff is thick and heavy. So I'm gonna lay this out and uh, make sure that it's uh, good to go. Okay, the two inch angle iron is measured out. So I'm going to make eight brackets out of this. And the best tool I have is this guy. So 
uh, see in a while. Holes are drilled on this piece. I decided to drill the holes first before I cut it into brackets uh, where you see the dotted spots. Uh, the next step is going to be I'm going to label each bracket and then I'm going to come over here on this one and label each of these bra braces so that these holes will be put down here on the bracket and then I'll actually trace these particular holes out. I don't necessarily trust that all of these are the same. They're probably close, but that way the holes for number one bracket will fit in number one leg. They'll line up and then I'll take this number two bracket and then trace the holes here. So each one will have a specific uh, leg and bracket combination. So the holes will be nice and consistent. First piece of the angle iron is cut down into eight legs, if you will, little braces. So these are going to be the ones that these brackets will sit on top of the roof and then there'll be four of these that will attach into place uh, for the four corners, if you will, of each solar panel. So then I just spent a little time trying to file them down to make them uh, very close in length so that it's uh, somewhat uniform. Here's an update on the brackets. So what I have are these two inch angle irons and I've drilled all the holes and I've numbered everything because obviously the holes aren't going to be consistent on each one. So this is bracket number one where those holes will line up down there and then these holes will line up on the top like this right there and then these holes have already been drilled on the actual panels so there's two holes on the top that'll go into the frame of the panels so the last step I gotta do is just take this and cut the different pieces out so I'll get my hacksaw and get to work on that Here's an example of one of the brackets. So what I'm doing is I drilled a bunch of holes and the screws that I got will fit in and will actually groove out the holes. You just have to work them in a little bit and then they actually create little grooves on the inside. So if you run them through a couple of times, I don't know if you can see that there are now man-made threads, if you will, on the inside there. So this is what's great about having the holes drilled just the right size so you still can thread the screws in. So, or the bolts I should say. So these bolts, I screwed them in and it's already extremely sturdy. I and mean, I'm really trying to pull this thing off there and it's already on there. So once I put the bolts on and what I've been doing is I've been doubling them up to uh, lock them against each other. So these things have just turned out really great, really happy with them. Just pieces of angle iron. And yeah, a couple of them, you know, a little bit of gaps or whatever, but I think it's all going to even out in the wash. Uh, there's nothing on my roof that's uh, quite even and level, so par for the course here. I think they'll work out great. All right, so here's an example of the first panel with all of the braces on. So, uh, you can see them all there. And again, hey, eh, eh, not perfect, but I think it'll work very well. They're very strong, very sturdy very solid which is nice and I was able to attach them here in the back so this part um, this cell will actually be hanging over the vehicle so the vehicle is about here uh, it starts rounding down right about here um, I'm not worried about it at all because I've got the spare tire in the garden and such in the back but uh, I think this is going to work out well very excited about it and let's just do a quick check here I was going for about uh, at well at least three inches of height and look at that. Panels are a little over four inches off the top of the roof. So the vents, when closed, will not be able to shade them at all, which is good. So we may have to be mindful of when the vents are open and closed, but I'll be able to keep shading uh, and shadows from my RV items off of the panels.